please stand? Let us pray. We give thanks, O God, our Father, for the many blessings of this life, for health and strength and all powers of body and mind, for our homes and loved ones, and for the wonderful joy of friendship, for our work and the opportunity of service, for the beauty and bounty of the world of nature, for the kindness, generosity, and sympathy shown to us by so many along life's journey. Give us thankful hearts, O God, for all your goodness, and help us by the way we live to repay some of the debt we owe. For the sake of him who came not to be served, but to serve, your Son, O Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. It is the 29th of October, 2023, in the year of our Lord. This 8 a.m. service is sung, Eucharist, and sermon. Hymn for the introit, All My Hope on God. It is found in the insert. All my hope on God is founded.
I will offer you the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed Lord and Father, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command through Jesus Christ, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. He set for the ministry of the word.
Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Nathali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah as far as the Western Sea, the Negev, and the plain. That is, the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar. The Lord said to him, this is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your, to your descendants. I have let you see it with your own eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in the valley of the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor. But no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired, and his vigor had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. And the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequal for all the signs and wonders of the, that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his, and his entire land and for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. The word of the Lord. The appointed psalm, Psalm 90, verse 1 through to verse 6, verse 13 through to verse 17. Psalm 90, found on page 587 in the Book of Common Prayer.
a reading from the Word of God, written in the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 2, beginning to read at the first verse. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain, but though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we speak praise from mortals, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether rather from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply we do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. The word of the Lord. Him for the gradual, three, eight, zero. Three, eight, zero. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to Christ, in Matthew's Gospel, the twenty-second chapter beginning to read at the 34th verse. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul and with all your mind. 
This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, the, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer. Nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I wonder this morning if you've ever had the experience of something happening in your life that you did not expect that somehow all of the factors came together in that particular experience and you suddenly realize that this was a God thing. It does not happen very often, but on rare occasions an opportunity comes along and we realize that only God could have put that before us. We know it because we realize that only God could have coalesced or engineered all of the circumstances that were necessary to make what happened a God thing. Maybe it was God stirring our hearts and putting restlessness in our souls to make us in some way change our lives. Maybe it happened because we received a phone call, a letter in the mail, an email, or we had a conversation with someone. Maybe it was a news story we read or viewed or some other trigger that got the ball rolling in our minds on that God thing. This church, like any other church is reaching people for God in Christ. This church is supposed to be concerned about reaching the next generation. And the reason for that is quite simple. Either as a church, we continue to reach that next generation, or we will die. And for me, that raises a pretty big question. Where do we want to go as the church? Just who are we as the church? What is it that we believe sets our church apart and makes us different? What is the church that we envision for ourselves as Anglicans? The first thing that must happen in order for us to see the vision that God has given the church is that we must see the church that is beyond the church. That might sound strange. 
But the reality is that we are the church. In a real sense, we do not go to church. We do not just come to church. We bring the church with us when we come. When we leave the church, we take the church with us wherever we go. In other words, we have got to move away from doing church and be the church. We need to envision a church that goes from doing church one day a week to being a church seven days a week, a church that understands that it is everyone, everywhere, every day being the church. If we go back to the New Testament and the life of Jesus the Christ, and we looked at what Jesus was about and what Jesus said, we begin to realize that what the church is really all about is a great commandment, a great commitment, and a great commission. The purpose of the church and the purpose of those of us who are followers of God in Christ can be boiled down to these three things. Loving God, the great commandment, serving others, the great commitment, and sharing God in Christ, the great commission. And these ideas are not our own ideas. They actually come from God in Christ because when we listen to what he said, and even studied how, study how he lived, you and I will find the same three things he did and taught are the same three things we are to do and teach as the church in this world. In our gospel this morning, there is this interesting story of a lawyer who came to Jesus and trying to trap Jesus. And he was trying to ask Jesus a question that he thought that Jesus could not answer. He asked him perhaps the greatest question Jesus was ever asked, which is the great commandment in the law. And of course you realize here the law that he is talking about refers to the first five books of the Old Testament. And in these first five books, there are 613 commandments. And he asked Jesus the question basically of the 613 commandments, which one is the greatest? And Jesus instantly sums up every commandment in this one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And this is the greatest and foremost commandment. In other words, every commandment that God has ever given is basically summed up in just one. We are to love God with all our hearts, souls, and minds. And if that is true, then the church, whatever else it does, must lead others to love God. The greatest success a church can ever have is to lead people to love God the way God ought to be loved. The greatest failure a church can have is to fail to lead people to love God as God deserves to be loved. The one thing that God wants from us more than anything else in this life is love. If it is our most treasured gift because that is the one thing that God will never force us to do. And any one of us who is a parent knows that the one thing we want from our children more than anything else is the one thing that we can never demand from them, and it is their love. And therefore, we need to envision a church where the number one thing that we are about, the number one thing that we are known for in the community is a burning, blazing desire and passionate love for Almighty God. Our church should be teaching just what it means to love God and how we intend to lead, motivate, and equip persons to love God the way God deserves to be loved. And there is not a single problem that any church can have that cannot be solved if the people in that church love God as they ought to love God. You know, this Jesus whom we claim to follow made some absolutely incredible statements about some absolutely incredible subjects that were staggering to the imagination. He said things no one else ever said nor dared to say, 
He said it is most, more blessed to give than it is to receive. He said that we should love our enemies. He tells us that we should pray for those who despitefully use us. And in Matthew's Gospel, he makes a statement that is probably the top three of the most mind-blowing statements Jesus ever made. For Matthew reports that Jesus said, The Son of Man did not come to be served, but he came to serve. We as the church must lead Christ followers to become Christ servants. No church must ever rise above leadership and servanthood. All the leadership in the world is useless if no one is willing to serve. You could be the greatest general in the world, but you are useless if no one is willing to follow you. You can be the greatest coach in the world, but unless persons are prepared to play in your team, you are nothing. You can have the best restaurant in the world with the greatest food in the universe, but if no one is willing to serve that food, then you are out of business. What we need in our church and what we must develop in our church is an army of servants. We are all different. We all have different gifts. We all have different talents. We all have different interests. We all have different ideas. We all have different abilities. And there is a reason for that. You see, God made us the way we are so that we could do what God wants us to do. And God wants us to take who we are, our passions, our gifts, our skills, our abilities, and put them to work in the service of the church. Every single person who is a part of the church, when asked this question, what is your particular service or what is your particular ministry in the church, should have an answer to that question. My friends, there's a place of service for every single one of us in the church. It is our job to see that we are plugged into that place of service, whether it is inside the church or outside the church. It all begins with an attitude. We need to ask ourselves this question right now. And we need to think about this question during the week ahead. Why do we come to this church week by week? Do we come here to be served or do we come here to serve? You see, outside of John 3:16, this is one of the most familiar passages in the scriptures. And we have heard it many, many times where Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. My friends, a disciple is just another word for Christ follower. And Jesus made it very plain that followers of Christ are to help others to become followers of Christ. You see, God cares about all people, even those who do not care about God. God wants to use us as followers to turn non-followers into God followers. And the easiest and most effective and most efficient way of doing that is when those of us who are followers of Christ simply share our story, where we live, where we work, and where we play. In Luke's Gospel, there's the story of a man that Jesus healed of a serious disease. And after Jesus healed him, he wanted to travel with Jesus and spend his time with Jesus. But Jesus said to him, go back home and tell people how much God has done for you. And that man went all over town telling them his story of how much God in Christ had done for him. We need to begin right where we live, in our neighborhood, in our community, in our office, on the golf course, if that's where we go. God wants us out there sharing God in Christ. 
Everyone who has ever become a follower of Christ has a story to tell. We all have a story to tell of how we went from being a non-believer to being a follower. How we went from being on the outside looking in to the inside looking out. And our church should teach us and train us and equip us and motivate us on how to share the story. And you may be asking in your heart, so how will all of this make us so different, so unique, and even more importantly, so ready to go to a postmodern, even post-Christian world with the good news of the gospel? We need to keep a few things in mind. First of all, you and I must realize that the church is not simply about programs. NCD, MAP, DOS. And if you're Anglicans and you don't know what those are, it tells me that you have not been paying attention. But my friends, it's not simply about these acronyms. It is about a process. And the old way of doing church was to see how many programs one could stack on top of each other and see how many times one could get people to come back to church to be part of these programs. But if we look at the New Testament, the New Testament says that the church should be all about a process. A process of making disciples. A process of leading people to love God, to serve others, and to share God in Christ. And secondly, the effectiveness of a church is measured horizontally, not vertically. It used to be that we measured effectiveness by how many times we could get people to come back to church. We even measured spiritual maturity that way. And we had the idea that if a person came to church Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday evening, or Monday afternoon, whether they came for visitation, whatever they came for, that they must be spiritually mature persons. But I want to let you in on a little secret. Because you see, some of the most awful people that you will ever meet are people who always at the church door when it opens. That's true. You see, the true way for us to measure the effectiveness of a church is by asking ourselves, how are we doing in moving persons along from loving God to serving others to sharing their story? And this is important for one reason. You see, as the church, we are living in a world of hurting people. There are persons out there who need what only God in Christ can give them. And the most effective way to get God in Christ to them is for us to be a church filled with people who love God, a church who seeks to serve others, and a church that is sharing God in Christ by the way in which we operate out there in the community. My prayer this morning is that we, as the people of God, will recognize that that is who we are, that we are the people of God, and that it is about making church more than just coming here on a Sunday. It is about going out of here and living church wherever we find ourselves. Amen. Now confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God.
prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our needs and those of others. Almighty God, to whom all our needs are asked before we ask, help us to ask only what accords to your will, and the good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, Offertory
comments on page 126 form B. Father, we offer to you these gifts which you have given us. This bread, this money, with them we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work. We come through your Holy Spirit, a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. As the spread of wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become channels of your love. Through the same Christ, all the word. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, O Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing the same to proclaim the glory of your name. Eucharistic Prayer, Form A, on page 131. All holy and glorious Father, all Creator God, we give you thanks because in your love and wisdom you brought all things into being and are truly worthy of praise from every creature you have made. Again and again we have turned away from you, yet in every age your steadfast love has called us to return to live in union with you. For it is your eternal purpose to put new life into all things and make them holy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who took our human nature upon him, you have redeemed the world from the bondage of sin. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, you have gathered the people to yourself to make known in every place his perfect offering which he made to the glory of your name. Hear us, therefore, Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord, and grant that these gifts of bread and wine may be unto us his body and blood. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ 
And so, Heavenly Father, rejoicing in his holy incarnation, his blessed passion and his perfect sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection from the dead, his glorious ascension into heaven, and looking for his coming in glory, we offer to you this bread and this cup. We pray that you will accept this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and grant that all who eat and drink of the body and blood of your son, our great high priest, may be renewed by your Holy Spirit and be one body, one spirit in him. Let faith and love increase in us, unite us with all bishops and all other ministers of your word and sacraments, and with the whole people of God, living and departed, whom you have made for yourself. Confirm us in holiness, that we may be found ready to join the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the holy apostles, and all your saints, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes again, forever giving you thanks and praise through him from whom all good things do come, with him, and in him, and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, in songs of everlasting praise. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Our souls be peace and be satisfied, and we will sing God's song with praise.
my brothers and sisters in Christ, persons who wish to receive the Holy Sacrament by intinction, you are asked to cross your hands and rest them on your chest. Thank you. During the ministration of the Holy Communion and Blessings, we will sing the following hymns. The first hymn, 549, as the choir retreats. Thank you. Our second hymn, 451. 451.
Our third hymn, 531. 531. with you. First post-communion prayer on page 147. Almighty Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we who share his body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We upon whom your spirit shines give light to the world. Help us to continue in faithful witness to your word, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth lives to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with us and remain with us and all whom we love and pray for this day and forevermore. Amen. Please sit for the notices. Good morning, brothers and sisters. 
First of all, in the notices, let's welcome any visitors to the church or those who may be streaming on the YouTube. You want to welcome you to the service, and I'm sure if you want to stand and be recognized, you can do so at this point in time. Any visitors today? Okay, we have none present. We want to pray for the parish sick and housebound members. And those listed are Mary Thomas, Gwendolyn White, Ernesta Walcott, Dennis Callender, Le Leanna Marshall, and Gwendolyn Marshall. Can you continue to pray for those members as they continue with us in their homes, and I'm sure they will be blessed by your prayers. We pray for the family of those who have died. Yvonne Maureen Foster and her funeral will be here on Friday, November the 3rd, 2023, at 10 a.m. Choir, that is also for your notices. We pray for the parishes of all saints and all souls who will celebrate the Feast of Title this week, and I'm sure you would want to pray for those members of your family who have passed, the all members who have passed, and you can probably say some quiet prayers for those people so that we can remember the saints and souls of our parish. We pray for the organizations this week. We pray for the altar guild, the altar servers, the choir guild, the usher guild, the encouragers, and the Ecclesia movement. Now, the encouragers are not a functioning group at this time, but we surely want to get some members back into that fold so that we can continue to do our visiting to the sick and housebound. Quite a few of the members who were with us, they've either passed on or they're now at homes. Some of them who even belong to the encouragers are now at home um, a bit sick or not able to come out to service. So we want to wish all of those who were in that group well, and we also want to encourage you to be an encourager. We offer thanksgiving for those who are celebrating birthdays or any other anniversary this week. We give God thanks for Cynthia Allen, Sonia Allman Hewitt, Selvin Carrington, and Iris Hunt. And I'm sure I believe Sonia is here representing Ms. Hunt today. Is a daughter, Sonia. Thank you so much, and good morning to everyone. My mom is 86 today. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning, church. Sharon Power. On Friday, the 4th of November, I'll be 67. 67. Any other birthdays? Okay, Chris, let's sing the birthday song. God continue to strengthen you as you continue your sojourn here with us. Office time this week will be by appointment, and you can contact Dr. Manuel Williams at 231-9747 to arrange a date and time. Upcoming, a book study will commence shortly with the parish. The study will start with the book, Making Sense of the Bible, Rediscovering the Power of the Scripture. And this book is available through Amazon, both digitally and a hard copy. And further details will be communicated at subsequent services. Also upcoming, fish fry and karaoke competition. And this will be held on December the 2nd, Saturday, December the 2nd. Tickets available today at $35. We've heard some complaints or we heard some cries from some people. We said $40 last week. And we have considered that, and we have now dropped the price to $35. So you can get your tickets today. I believe Fran has some tickets, or Michael. So kindly contact either Fran or Michael to get your tickets at $35. The Michael Fellowship is seeking donations for their breakfast program 
which they want to start early in the new year, and donations can be sent to our account at SCIB the, under the name St. Barnabas, journal account number 239-7591, transit 9626, with a swift code FCIB, BB, BB. Kindly give generously to that program because you want to make sure that no one goes to school hungry. No child should be going to school hungry. So we want to start that breakfast feeding program for the children within the area, and I believe we will probably start with the Grantley Prescott Memorial School, and then, then we can probably spread our wings a little wider as we get deeper into that program. So kindly remember all of that that I've said so that you can go home and study it and say, well, I will support the Michael Fellowship in that very serious program. A vacancy now exists for an assistant to the supervisor at the Senior Citizens Daycare Care Center. Interested persons should submit the application to St. Barnabas246 at gmail.com so that you can get some information on the role, and you can also see me afterwards if you want to find out what the role is all about. I can give you some further details on that as well. During this week, we will have Church Charming at 6.30 on Monday. On Tuesday, there will be a deanery council meeting at St. Leonard Church. And on Wednesday, we celebrate All Saints Day. And then on Thursday, we also celebrate All Souls Day. And we have prayer practice at 7 p.m. On Saturday, the morning cleaners will continue their work here and the Barnabas Emotion all at 6 a.m. And at 5 p.m., there will be line dance classes. Next Sunday, we will have two services, November the 5th, 6.30, Song Eucharist with Sermon, 9.15, Song Eucharist with Sermon, and also Sunday School at 9.15. We will now hear from Dr. Marvel Williams. He will introduce Brother Walter Forbes, who will be giving us a demonstration on the organ. So sit, don't leave this place. Morning. I'd like to welcome all who are worshiping with us, whether it's for the first time or for the first time in a long time. Welcome to St. Barnabas. Let me start with the bad news first. Bad news is that we have a serious leak in this roof. I came in here yesterday at 4 o'clock, and right where Preston is sitting, there was a pool of water here and a pool of water down here next to the pedals for the organ. Now you cannot buy a $350,000 organ and put it underneath a tent. Now that might sound like a joke, but we've got to fix this roof. We either need to replace it or we need to repair it. Because with all the rain we had in the past week, this roof is leaking. Mr. Clark came and I saw the water and he tells me that the water is coming down the wall here coming on that ledge and going across and coming down on the ground over there. That's the bad news. So, you gotta fix the roof. One way or the other. All right? That's the bad news. I had to get that out of the way first. Um, the PA system is now fully installed. As you can see, there are now two microphones um, here that will help us in terms of the sound for the choir and so that project is over we've completed two of three projects in fact yes two of four projects um, we've still got to finish the annex but we put the annex on hold until we completed the organ and we will get back to dealing with the annex in due course but the PS system is now in um, it's working pretty well, sometimes too well. Because when I want to talk secrets, I can't talk secrets anymore. But it is in. Um, 
I want to say um, happy birthday to my twin, my cousin who lives in Montreal. She turns three score years and 10 on Friday. Um, and I know she's watching, so I have to send birthday greetings to her right now because they watch every single Sunday. There's a group in Montreal that watch the service every single Sunday and they send their comments. Um, and I want to greet them, but also greet my cousin, who is my twin. Figure that out. <laughs> also want to welcome this morning, um, Junior Forbes. Junior was the person who dismantled the old organ and with his team constructed this new organ that you see here. Um, he tells me to tell you that it's a work in progress, but I want you to hear what it sounds like, and it's not totally finished as yet. And I'm not going to wait until the last hymn. I'm going to let Junior do it for you now, so you can hear it and what it can do. Up, Junior. Reverend Dr. Williams, Dean Emeritus, members of the PCC, officers, um, members of this congregation, brothers and sisters, I am really delighted this morning to have the opportunity to introduce to you for the first time here the Rogers 351D digital organ and also the new set of pipes that you have built by the Organ Supply Industries, Inc. in Pennsylvania. A lot has to be done still, so we're going to let you hear. I don't know what the Reverend means by let you hear it with any hymn or anything like that. That's not going to happen this morning, simply because we haven't set it up for that. So we thought we would just let you hear what it sounds like. Is that okay? Good, good. Before we can do that, we have to unlock the organ, right? Okay, well, thanks. It's open. Oh, I'm going to still give the keys to Reverend, <laughs> Reverend Williams because he has to have the keys to keep it open, right? So here's the, I present these keys to you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, now, he did say so project in progress, and that is because the pipes come on speech, kind of voiced, but you still have to regulate them, and so the regulator is always a very highly specialized person who will come in at some time later to do that. So when that is done, then we will do some granular checking on all the other voicings and get it up to scratch, but I think it's kind of half decent right now. Um, so what we'll do is let you hear a working on Immortal Invisible. And you will hear the, what you're accustomed to hearing from an organ in the very first attempt, um, which is going to be done by my very good friend, is going to be just the diapason sound, which you're accustomed to hearing on the organ. And then you'll hear some flutes, which will go very soft. Then you'll hear a demonstration, very short, of the reeds. After that, you hear some strings, so it's going to be soft and relaxed. And then the organ is going to half explode. And then he's going to play some other stuff. And then you'll get to hear, finally, after two attempts at this, the trumpets at the back of, of, of the sanctuary. So you're going to hear a lot. So it's going to take maybe about five, ten minutes. So please be patient with us.
you very much. Sir. That is your Rolls Royce that you bought. <laughs> it's up to you to protect it. Um, should you give me the keys to the organ? No, I am going to give Chris a key to the organ. That's yours. This other key I give to the church warden to lock up in the safe. Because I don't want it, because when I leave here this morning, I might not be able to find it again. <laughs> but I want to thank Junior and the members of his team. I don't know if you realize that the organ was playing itself. Okay. It can be programmed to play itself, and that is one of the features that it has. All right. So now, um, notice from the church army. Church army would like to thank those who came out yesterday um, in the rain to be part of their picnic in King George V Memorial Park. It was a little soft on the foot and a little wet above ground, but they still had a good time. Let me change that. We still had a good time um, in the time that we spent out there. I think that that is it. Yes. Um, Michelle, you were, there was another stuff about dance. Um, the dancers is having this, I don't remember what it's called. It's, Kim in church, Kim in church, Kim is not. But the dancers is having this um, concert in dance at St. Gabriel School on November the 12th. So there it is. Sunday, November the 12th at the Ann Johnson Auditorium. The power of dance um, at six o'clock in the evening. Tickets are $25. Um, the Dawson Dancers, Dance in Africa, Barbados Dance Theater, Generation Dancers, and more. All right, so please support this Dawson program. Ms. Jordan? Good morning, Ms. Jordan. De Calores. The Lord be with you. Recessional hymn 384. 384.
let us pray. Eternal God, by the power of your spirit, you have called us to be your church in the world. Help us to acknowledge this call and enable us as your people, wherever we go, to make that church manifest. These things we ask for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. word um, the membership list is at the back on the table please check see if your name is there see if the information is correct if the information is not correct then call Cynthia and tell her what the relevant information is so that you can be sure that your name is on the membership list I am tired of people coming to me and telling me they're members and their names are not on the list if your name is not on the list you're not a member. <laughs> and by the way, I've completed most of the projects I came here to do, so you know that my time here is limited. It's no time for me to go.